So let's get cracking. To try to recreate this highly hazardous driving technique in the real world, the guys are using a pedestrian free zone. The lovely people at the Alameda County Sheriff's Emergency ah. Vehicle Operations Center have lent us their driving course. It is a blank slate. I'm going to set up a whole bunch of cones that will create our city streets for blind driving. Jamie is going to play the blind driver first, so Adam sets up the course alone. This means that the mustachioed maestro won't have the advantage of knowing its twists and turns. In setting up the course for our blind driver, I've tried to add all the obstacles that we see in the movie. So I'm starting out with a nice, long, get your bearings kind of straightaway. That also includes a sharp left-hand turn. Right after that, I've got a second sharp left-hand turn. <laughs> and I've included an obstacle for Jamie to swerve around. This ought to be all the challenges we need for our blind driver. And that just leaves the car, which for this test comes complete with in-car cameras, a driving instructor called Derek, and a crucial safety feature. This car is specially rigged with controls so that he can hit his own set of brakes and stop the car in case I get frisky on him. With frisky Jamie blinded by science... <laughs> a lovely color. Where does he uh, see the problem areas of the course being? Obviously, the straight bits are going to be the easiest ones. The problem areas are going to be the turns, exactly how far I turn and when. That's going to be tricky. You feeling ready, champ? Yeah, let's do it. Just like in the movie, Jamie will be totally in the dark, relying solely on Adam's directions. My role in this test, I am literally a backseat driver. I will be giving him all the stimulus, hopefully, he needs to drive this course correctly, although I don't expect him to. I foresee many, many knocked over cones. ooh -ha. It's time for ignition. All right, Jamie, go forward. Just get your bearings a little bit to the left, a little bit to the left. That's good. Cruising at an easy pace down the straightaway, they come to their first bend in the road. OK, there's a turn coming up to the left. Excellent. Made it with no cones down. Straighten it out, straighten it out. OK, pick up the speed. Let's pick up the speed. But not for long. Keep going, keep going. To the right, to the right, to the right. Now hard to the left. To the right, to the right, more to the right. <laughs> Soon their drive turns into a game of Cone Pac-Man. More to the right. <laughs> okay, to the left, to the left, more to the left. <laughs> and then to the right. Beautiful. Okay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> we need a new navigator. <laughs> Managing the course took a very different turn to what they thought. How did I do? Well, I gotta say, together we swerved around the cardboard obstacle perfectly. But it turns out the turns were easy. It was correcting for the straight driving that was more difficult. Right over there is the worst spot. Like a couple of out-of-sync co-drivers, Adam blamed Jamie. His ability to correct on the fly on the straightaways was pretty poor, even up to and including his ability to know left from right at times. And Jamie blamed Adam. You know, more, more, more is like, what, 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 you know, it's, it's easy to get confused or not do something enough or, or too little. If the guys don't begin to work as one, they're finished, finished, finished. <laughs> so Grant, what's with the sweater? Did you retire? No, I'm not retiring yet. I'm merely appropriately dressed for our next series of myths. Is the next series of myths about fashion disasters? No. With over 60 million golfers around the world, it's no surprise that the website's been inundated with requests to do myths about golf. The first one is that a tree is 90% air. Yeah, I've heard that one. And a lot of golfers say if your ball gets stuck behind a tree, instead of shooting around the tree, it's better to shoot through it because you have a 90% chance of getting through because it's 90% air. Great. So all we need is a bucket of balls, some golf clubs, camp out behind a tree, see how many we hit through. Sounds good to me. From a distance, a tree may look like a solid, impenetrable object. But up close, there's a huge amount of space between its leaves. So huge that some golfers think you have a 90% chance of swinging clean through. 